Hi YouTube, my name is Rick and today I'm going to be doing a video showing that the Earth's curve can be measured. Not only can it be measured, it can be done with very simple equipment. So let's get into it. So here's a basic description of, of my setup. Here is a camera and I've got a measuring stick here which I will be using a, a survey rod and out here is my mountain. Now, for example, if my camera is at an elevation of 3,000 feet, the top of the mountain is 6,000 feet, the difference will be it, the mountain will be 3,000 feet higher than the camera. Now, the key to these measurements are this line, this has to be level, which I will be doing with a water level, a tube filled with water, so that my camera to my uh, measuring stick will be perfectly level, or as level as I can get it. And then we can measure this on the stick, how high the mountain is visually. Now this is a done on a flat earth. We will be doing those calculations. However, since the world is round, this mountain won't be up here, the top of it. It will be down here. And we can, since we've got this setup of a level line, we can measure that. Just like this. And we can tell what the difference is. And from that, we can show that the world is actually round. So now I'm going to, now the re, how I got this level like I said, the water level, and I put a couple of stands up on each side of my measuring rod and put duct tape on the, so that I could do a measuring line, a level line, with the camera. And I can do that in Photoshop. So for next I'll show a video clip of the day I did my measurements and you can see how my setup is. Okay, I'm here today and I'm trying to measure the height of Centennial Mountain over there in the, little, in the Bear Paws. First I'll sh show you where I am and my GPS location. You get GPS first. GPS just shut off. Okay, there's date, time, and two different ways of measuring location. Just to show I am here, there's Square Butte, Round Butte, the High Woods, Little Belt. That is the intersection between Montana Highway 80 and 81. Big Snowy Mountains. North-South Moccasins with the Judiths in the middle. And then I'm looking kind of to the north to the Bear Paws. Which are, if I can see this here, right there. Now what I am trying to measure is Centennial Mountain, which is right there in between those two hills out there. Okay, what I have set up is I have a survey rod set up next to that mountain in my viewfinder and it is 57.3 feet away from my camera. These marks, each white mark and black mark is a hundredth of a foot. So that will come into play later. I didn't notice until later, but this survey rod is not measured in hundredths of a foot. It measures in eighth of an inch. So each white mark, each black mark is an eighth of an inch. And I will have to convert that into decimal feet later with my calculations. I have, I used a water level to level the camera with these two stands and then I'm working with duct tape. So this 
and this and my camera are all level. So, yeah, see, so just to show you, here is a, oh, what was this called? Peak Finder. Okay, there's Round Butte and Square Butte, which are there. And I'm measuring Centennial Mountain. Which is right, again, there's a little zoomed in view. Here's Baldy of the Bear Paws. Around here, you got to say which mountain range you're in because every mountain range has a Baldy of some kind. So, anyway, this is the one I'm measuring right there. So, I'm just going to try to kind of do this with my video camera here, my phone. And we're going to zoom in here. I've got my good camera already set up and I'm going to take pictures there, but I'm going to do a picture here. Hopefully that's focusing. I don't know if that is. Anyway, the other camera, I've got it stopped way down so everything's in focus. And I'll be able to do, put a line across that duct tape in Photoshop, copy, paste another line, and then do my measurements that way. And here is the image I got. And just so you know, the camera is a Canon EOS 20D. The lens on it is a zoom lens, so 70 to 210. And I think most of the shots were done with that 210. I tried several. This one, I'm pretty sure it was done with 210. It doesn't matter. And boy, it looks like I've got to clean my camera out a little bit. But as you can see here, here's my duct tape mark. And you can see, there's the level of the water. And I did both stands to be level with my camera. So this point, this point, and my camera are all level. But before we start doing our measurements here, let's do a calculation of what everything should be, and then we'll get come back to this, this photograph. I apologize for that clicking that's been in the video so far. I think I finally figured out that it's my hard drive kind of transferring through the to the mic in my laptop. I've adjusted a little bit, so hopefully that will be better from here on out. First, we need to do um, measurements if we were on a flat earth. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to get a measurement from the camera location to Centennial Mountain and also the height of Centennial Mountain, which would be its elevation above the camera elevation. For the measurements to Centennial Mountain, I will be using Peak Finder just because it's really easy to get everything all in one spot and quickly. So for Centennial Mountain, I will be using the elevation of 5,797 feet and distance from camera as 59.8 miles. I will have to convert that into feet. As far as camera elevation, I'm going to use what was on the GPS plus 5 feet. The camera was about 5 feet above the ground. So that would be 3,764 plus 5 feet. So camera elevation will be 3,769. I will be showing my work and calculations as I go on this sheet. So let's get the mountain data entered on here first. The difference in elevation between the mountain and my camera is 2,028 feet. And our distance was 59.8 miles. Converted to feet is 315,744 feet. 
This is the triangle calculator I'll be using. I will have a link in the description. The reason I'm using this one is it down, if you scroll down, it shows how all the calculations were done for to solve the triangle. So I've already got the data all entered in. And as we look here, that angle is what we really wanted. And on the right, you can see how all of the triangle was solved. Because we now have this angle, which is angle above level to the top of Centennial, Centennial Mountain if the world was flat, we can now calculate out what the measurement should be on the survey rod, which, as you remember, was 57.3 feet away from the camera. I've entered in the data into a, the triangle calculator, and on our survey rod, we should be 0.368 feet above level, or 4.416 inches, and that converts closest in eighths to four and three eighths inches above level. Remember our tape marks, the top of those tape marks are level with the center of the camera. So let's put a center, a level line across the top. And as we calculated, if the earth were flat, the mountain would be four and three eighths inches above that level line. And it isn't. And that's because the Earth isn't flat, it's round. But let's see how much drop, because of curve, that we have over almost 60 miles. And we can see Centennial Mountain is just a tiny bit above that level line. So let's draw in a line there. And zoomed in. I'm getting a measurement of an eighth of an inch above level. Let's go back to our triangle calculator and see how many feet difference it is due to the curvature of the Earth. Okay, we'll enter in our eighth of an inch at our survey rod, which converts to one ninety-sixth of a foot because there's 96 one eighth inch marks in a foot, and it converts to decimal of 0.0104. We then put that into our triangle calculator, and we get an angle of 0.0104. There's a reason for that. I put that 50, made that rod out there at 57.3 feet, specifically so that one hundredth of an inch on the rod would equal one hundredth of a degree at the camera. And our calculations here. With our 0.0104 angle to the top of Centennial Mountain, we can now figure how many feet above level it is at 59.8 miles. Put it into the triangle calculator, and we get 57.4 feet above level at 59.8 miles away. Definitely have a drop due to curvature. So, if the Earth were flat, I should have measured Centennial Mountain to be 2,028 feet above level. Instead, because the Earth is round, I measured the top of Centennial Mountain to be 57.4 feet above level. The total curvature drop at 59.8 miles was 1,970.6 feet. Now, how would this all compare to a curve calculator? Let's see. So here is Walter Bislin's curve calculator. I will have a link in the description to it. Now the, the data I put in was for the observer height. I put in 
the original camera elevation, which was 3769, target distance at 59.8 miles, and the target height, which was Centennial Mountain, its elevation was 5797. When it's all calculated out, the drop is was 2380 according to the calculations. And honestly, that's really the only calculation on this page that matters for what I just did. And it's, what, almost 400 feet off of what I measured. But you have to keep in mind, I was looking through nearly 60 miles of atmosphere. So there's going to be some refraction. So if we click on the standard refraction calculation for it, the drop is now 2,010 feet. That's only 40 feet different than what I measured. I'm satisfied with that. In fact, I'm pretty happy with that. Kind of amazed it got, I got that close. This next slide is just a comparison between on the right would be my measurements and what I saw. And that matches up pretty close compared to if the earth was flat, how that mountain would look compared to everything. Pretty easy to see that we live on a globe. This last slide has all of the data that I had all in one page. You can screenshot it and check my work. But the short of it is, yes, we live on a sphere and yes, Curvature can be measured. I do want to thank Walter Bislin for his curve calculator and a couple of channels you might want to check out. Uh, Jesse Kozlowski is a professional land surveyor who has some really nice stuff. And Miles Davis uh, easily shows curvature with no math at all. I'll have all of those links below, as well as the link to my triangle calculator. Go do the measurements yourself, guys.